Hi, Cindy Hodnett here, your host of Behind the Scenes. We are coming to you remote, um, obviously, as we continue sort of to uh, count down toward the lifting of um, a lot of restrictions that uh, the country's under right now. But we are thrilled to um, have with us on the line one of our dear friends from Hollandale, Florida, Jamie Wasser. Jamie, first of all, thanks uh, so much for being with us today. Thanks for taking time to, to talk with us today about how things are going. Thanks so much for having me. Well, you know, we, um, full disclosure, I guess, for our listeners, we, of course, were down there a few months ago and uh, got a really great firsthand look at at your store and your operations, your design services. Um, and just for our listeners, you know, of course, we'll have images of those up online on, on the YouTube version of the podcast. But, you know, most importantly, how how are you and your family doing? How are how are things going at the store? Right now, our store is closed as we're we're shut down, but our family, everyone is really good. Thankfully, we're all staying home. We're staying connected. We're, we're really grateful to be healthy and to be safe in our homes and to have plenty of food and water and toilet paper since that seems to be a shortage out there. <laughs> so that, that is one of the like, strangest, I think, uh, <laughs> the strangest things to come out of this whole experience for sure. But, um, well, tell me a little bit. Did you guys, were you guys open until... Um, um, the mandate came to to close, or how, when did you make that decision? We were actually an early adopter with this, and the actual date we closed was Monday, March 16th. So we had the team come in. We got everyone prepped and set up to begin to work from home. We made sure our team understood we were not going to furlough them or lay them off. They still had their jobs. We wanted to do everything we could to keep you know everything business as usual to the best of our abilities. But we made it really clear that we would need their support. We can't do this alone. And uh, we needed to do whatever creative measures we could come up with to drum up business at this time. So, you know, I, 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 I love that you that you say you guys were early adopters, because I think one of the things um, that happened with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of more um, not as large retailers is that it just kind of blindsided everyone. And, you know, we know from our, our time with you um, or late last year, I guess, that you guys are, are really, uh, you do a great job of intermingling your digital tools with your person-to-person -person relationships. But, you know, how are you, how are you tweaking sort of those, um, you know, those, those abilities now to stay connected with your customers? Yeah, absolutely. The technologically advanced and savvy team, the transition process is, was of going remote was not as much of a challenge as I can imagine it may have been for some other retailers. We were already set up on the cloud and we were actually already set up with a team drive and set up with the tech we needed to be able to one, access our showroom files and two, stay connected with our team to be able to work on things together while being separated. So we're staying connected with our customers mostly by reaching out through phone calls and doing a lot of FaceTime. And funny enough, when we get on calls, most of our clients say, you know, I'm not used to this. I don't know how to flip my camera around to show you my living room. And then we talk it through step by step. We try to get them comfortable through this process, which is new for them. And even for us, as we've had clients remote anyway in our showroom, we were really comfortable with it um, through being able to get our clients who may not be so comfortable with that technology. We managed to salvage some pending sales that we had begun BC, which takes on a whole new yeah. meeting right now before Absolutely. Corona. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good way of looking at it. You know, but I think that's great because um, I would imagine that, you know, as you guys are going through and coaching your your clients and your customers on the technology with this, that just even further really strengthens the the bond that you have with them. Is totally. That correct? Yeah, totally. I mean, we're they're really comfortable with us at this point the ones that we've started before this process you know we've been really really fortunate that they've they've been willing to continue on with the process for the most part um and then as far as new opportunities we're texting clients at this point we're texting really a lot we find ourselves just reaching out touching base we want to see how their families are doing um and then thinking about what we can do to to assist them we have some older clients who aren't so tech savvy so we asked if we can even order them groceries i mean i'm wow. personally set up with all the apps that i know most of them may not be set up with 
So we know the sales will come, but right now we wanted to show our support to them as they've have done for us during normal times. Wow, that's good. Wow, ordering groceries for your I love it. That's that's fantastic. Um, did you guys from the from the furniture side? Did you have to? Um, I would imagine it was inevitable. You had to change either deliveries or have you noticed any sort of um, product issues at this point? Yeah, I mean, a lot of our vendors are are really shut down at this point. There's few that are accessible, but on delivery end, we're kind of at a standstill because as much as our team has been quarantined, we've been working from home. I know my team is safe to send out, but we really don't know the environment that we'd be sending them out to. So if we're able to do, for example, delivery to a private home that doesn't have a guard gate stopping them or, you know, valet that or, or receiving area that doesn't is not stopping deliveries right now, we don't know the circumstances of that household. Have they been quarantining? Have they been going out in public and still being social? So we really put all deliveries to a halt to protect mm-hmm. our, our team and also to protect the clients because as much as our team has worked from home, I don't know how many times they're visiting the grocery store. You know, they may be asymptomatic. The clients may be asymptomatic. So we've really halted all deliveries and we have quite a backlog building up. Um, and as much as maybe we can still get products shipped, even, mm-hmm. you know, for us to deliver a product to somebody's front door, it's not it's not our ideal method, you know, with the type of product that we, we sell and the type of service we like to provide. We're really kind of limiting it as much as possible. And then if we have a client really pushing for a delivery, we'll we'll kind of have them understand and talk them through. Listen, like we're not going to be able to provide our white glove service. This is what we normally do. Like if you really, really need the stuff, this is the process that it's going to have to go through to get it to you. And we just can't be in a hundred percent and it's, it's hard for us to deliver less than par of our service. Right. Right. Well, I would, I mean, I would imagine, well, I would hope, I guess that, that most of the, um, most of the customers and clients, you know, would be, be understanding about really what has to happen right now, but what, you know, what kind of things are you hearing in terms of, um, uh, you know, what, what comes next? I mean, I think a, a lot of people are asking, you know, what happens after, you know, what's the new normal look like for retail? You know, what, what kind of feedback are you getting or what kind of plans are you guys making for, you know, when restrictions are lifted and we all go back to some sense of normalcy with regard to schedules? You know, it's a tough one because the real question is when is after? We just don't really know. We're all kind of chartering through these unusual times. We just don't know how long this will go on and when we can actually get back to normal. We're very grateful at the point for the clients who've decided to proceed and continue with existing projects. And we're also grateful to the ones that have been reaching out to us. And at the moment, we do have some that like to get going on new ones. And we have quite a few projects that have been put on hold at this point. Um, As you can imagine, we know furniture purchasing is not the number one priority during a global Mm -hmm. health crisis. Mm -hmm. And we get it. So we know right now home is a safety net for everyone. And the longer this goes on, the more possibility people may start to realize they have that area they're now ready to work on Mm -hmm. or that they absolutely need to set up a home office space now that they realize that makeshift kitchen table as a desk is just not conducive, you know, for how much they're working from home. So I think I'm hopeful and positive that retail will go back to normal when this ends. I think people will crave that interpersonal experience. They'll be excited to get out and and work with people, see people face to face instead of by screen. I think, you know, everyone's going to be really excited to to go out there, see products and get inspired and get back to normalcy. But we just (laughs) we don't know how long that this will be going on for. Yeah, for sure. There's still a a ton of questions with regard to that. But um you know, some of the industry experts are actually predicting, um, sort of alluding to what you said, that, you know, people are spending a lot of time home and they're looking around and they're like, okay, yeah, it's really time to, you know, whatever, upgrade the sofa or redo the home office, you know, and I think it's anybody's guess in terms of of how that might play out or or that timing. But, you know, you guys, um, have you developed specific post pandemic for lack of a better way of saying it strategies that you're going to implement or is it sort of a TBD as we go along? 
So we understand reaching out to the market right now is the best time through social media. There's so much digital technology and really potential eye exposure. Everyone is kind of at home staring at their phones right now. We've adjusted our strategy by creating more relevant content in terms of offering mm -hmm. special incentives on quickly available items for delivery to our design and trade partners who need items for their clients' projects or for our showroom clients. So we actually went back through some good old grassroots marketing tactics, reaching out to specific groups on Facebook, reaching out um, through our email list. And we wanted to most importantly, let our clients know that we're here for them. And we wanted to make their extended stays at home more comfortable and functional. So we actually lowered a lot of our prices at this time to help with the situation on all of our in-stock inventory in order mm -hmm. to provide better items at better prices to them quickly. And do you think, I mean, really more for um, almost anecdotal conversation, I mean, do you, you know, as, as we're recording this, of course, we're heading into Easter, Passover, holiday weekend, and, you know, a lot of families aren't going to be able to get together as they usually do. Do you think that there will be a renewed significance attached to, to the importance of family and friends after, after we're out of this period of social isolation? I think so. I think people will always need a place to host friends and family. I think this is why furniture will always be a, an important part of the home. No one wanted this. No one expected these circumstances. And we do want everyone to be their most comfortable while they're sheltering in place and for the long haul after. I think this is why we remain focused on finding the right products for our clients' needs and also their space and lifestyle. So we feel it's really important to offer customizable options. As we know, not every home is a one size fits all scenario. Like if you go out to a big box store or, you know, maybe they're doing a lot of e-commerce, there may be one or two options that you may be able to order something, but we still want to be able to customize to meet the specific needs, especially with the ever-changing customer. And the way we spend our time is now evolving due to the situation. So we think that will follow after this period as well. And, you know, does that uh, kind of just drilling down a little bit, would you see that, would you see that um, influencing or transitioning any of the, uh, any of the, maybe the furniture styles, the decor styles that have been prevalent, um, you know, in, in recent years? I mean, would we, do you think we'll go back to, you know, big, comfortable furniture or do you see any kind of style shift that might, might accompany this? You know what I'm thinking? I don't think we ever, even though we're not big and oversized and overstuffed, I think our focus was always comfort, even though our pieces definitely have style. Comfort was always a big factor in, in doing our buying and bringing stuff to our showroom to bring to our clients. Ultimately, I think maybe where the needs will change is people might not be going out to movies because you're exposing yourself to so many people and who knows what in a movie theater. So maybe somebody's needs have changed where their kids have grown up and they have a den they're not using or maybe a playroom that the kids grew out of and they might want to shift that into their personal home theater so we can fully outfit their you know old den into a home theater customized for how many seats are in the family and you know make a surround sound system in there for them do the um, acoustic walls so with us being a one-stop shop whatever needs that the family might have we can adapt our showroom you know virtual virtually to reach our clients and and really deliver what what their changing needs might be for for this whole adaptation. I, I love that example. I mean, I think I think you probably, <clears throat> you know, hit the nail on the head with with uh, that example. You know, the other the other one that we're hearing a lot is that, you know, after um, so many companies have kind of been been forced to figure out how to, you know, allow their employees to effectively work from home and they are, they're adapting all the technologies and, you know, um, some folks are saying there'll be a real resurgence or even more adaptation of work from home. Would you see, you know, for example, categories like home office? I mean, would you see that becoming more important? Definitely. And that's a big thing that, you know, we really don't want to push aggressively sailing because selling at this point, because sure. we really feel like it's about health right now. And we want to make sure like we're not being obnoxious in any sense of the way. And we know the sales will come. We know everything will turn around when the time is right. But definitely, I mean, for me, right before this happened, my building shut down all deliveries and I needed to get a desk delivered because I knew I needed to be able to work productively from home. So. Um, 
setting up my space of then that I can come and have my desk and my computer was very important, not knowing how long, you know, I'd be in this mm-hmm. situation. And, and we're making that possible. We've reached out to some vendors to see what's in stock, what can we actually get shipped that doesn't need to go to a receiving warehouse, what we can get to somebody's door. We know people do want to maintain as much of a normal life and normal routine. And really, that's the best thing at this time is to keep keep a routine and, and keep your productivity up as much as possible. So I think home office definitely, definitely, you know, for anyone that hasn't had one or maybe had one that was kind of makeshift, mm-hmm. um, I think that'll be a huge growing category um, for sure coming out of this. Yeah. And, you know, I think, um, I think you're really, um, you're really very representative of a lot of uh, what's good about the industry in terms of what's come out of this. You know, we've seen the home furnishings industry and retailers um, in particular, really, uh, you know, again, blindsided by this and challenged by it. But there's there is a sort of seems to be a little bit of an undercurrent of positivity starting to build that you know we will get to the other side and you you've said it several times you know we know the sales will come what um what about there you know in in your area you know what how is the how is the community mood now do you see yet this kind of shift from sort of, you know, being, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I almost, I almost say like shell-shocked, you know, being shell-shocked by what happened to maybe emerging a little bit from that frame of mind. Do you see that yeah, there? I mean, I haven't really been out of my home so much. I've been doing a yeah. really good job of sheltering in place. We go, you know, for short walks to get some fresh air. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, we were doing a lot more. Now we're kind of a little concerned to be going out and sharing air with people. But really, the mood's been pretty quiet on the roads. People, a lot of people have masks on. It's kind of surreal to walk outside and see, you know, people in your community wearing masks. And I will say I've noticed people being more friendly, more patient. People are like holding the elevator and saying, oh, you get this one. I'll get the next one. Like not rushing ahead of you to jump in. And um, people are actually waving outside that we pass by. (laughs) And um that's that's definitely a shift because I mean especially in South Florida unless you really know somebody people aren't the most friendly unfortunately Mm -hmm. so I think people are actually kind of coming together as much as possible even if it's just sharing a smile or a wave um we're super super thankful for the people of our community like the grocery delivery people all the essential workers making it easier for us to stay at home and I think people are really reaching out more to the ones that they love and the people they haven't had time to connect to, you know, during the normal rush of life and the normal routine everyone before was super busy, rushing to work, being at work all day, maybe coming home for a quick workout or cooking dinner, dealing with kids and everything else that I think people are really connecting more. And I can speak for myself and my experiences. I've been able to connect with more of my friends, vendors, colleagues, we get on FaceTime calls, we've scheduled virtual happy hours with groups of friends that we all live in different states. So it's actually been really nice to have some extra time to catch up with these people, family members that we may not normally have the time to, you know, sit down and have a nice chat with. Yeah, I, you know, um, it's, it's lovely, actually, that that part of it, I think is lovely. And, and, probably one of the most unexpected, um, one of the most unexpected things that, that people have anticipated coming out of this. But, um, you know, given, given that, and we'll, we'll kind of wrap up with this, um, looking at, you know, where we are now, and, and of course you guys are a, a third generation, right? Retailer, mm-hmm. um, yeah. with strong ties in the community, you know, are there, are there certain, either business uh, sort of strategies, not even really strategies, just new business perspectives or even even life perspectives that have changed for you personally as a result of this? I think more like the whole slowdown of our lifestyles really kind of showed what's important because I think, like I mentioned before, everyone was just so caught up in the hustle of the grind of working hard, working, you know, you, I mean, me personally in a family business, I come home from work, I'm sitting on my laptop on the couch, I'm constantly connected to my phone, you know, waiting for a client to get back to me, waiting for a sign off, you know, from a client to approve an order. And there was always like, the rush of what's going on. I can't miss anything, you know, keeping up with all everything going on inside and outside of the home. And I think this whole shift kind of brings people back to slowing down a bit and 
appreciating the time with family. I mean, I can't ever remember in the last four years when I was able to have lunch with my husband. <laughs> um, so that's actually been really nice. We're both working from home and, and we take breaks for lunch as much as we're not scheduled meetings, you know, mostly throughout the day, we, we try to keep our lunch hour open to have a quick lunch together and, and just, you know, enjoy the time, sit out, look on our balcony, get fresh air. And, mm -hmm. and just those slow down things that, that really have come to be a possibility. And um, I think really everyone at this time should find a healthy distraction because that's been super helpful. I found yeah. tons of companies out there offering free subscriptions during this time. And I've personally taken up yoga mm -hmm. and that's been really helpful. I think, you know, people's stress levels may be up. I think people are scared. People have a lot of anxiety. I know there's a lot of resources, resources offering um, teletherapy sessions. And I just think everybody right now can do whatever little win they can do for themselves. You know, how big or how small they are, they'll feel much better after. So whether it's a workout class or like an online guitar class, if they've always wanted to take up, you know, a new hobby, there's tons of cooking shows. I've seen, you know, grandmas and grandpas in Italy doing live pasta making classes, which I'd love to try, which I might actually have time to try. So I just think like shifting your priorities to family, to taking care of yourself. I think everybody kind of forgot that in the, the rush and the hustle of everything. And that's really kind of opened my eyes during this. And, and it's, uh, it's a, it's a nice, uh, a nice way to close because you're really reiterating the importance of connections, not only with family, but also with your, your clients and your customers. And, um, you know, it seems like that those, those bonds are just going to be that much stronger uh, on Absolutely. the other side. Absolutely. So, um, Jamie Wasser, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Um, we appreciate you sharing a little bit about your experience and, and what you guys are planning going forward. Um, it's really nice, I think, that you, you uh, underscore the importance of connections, both with family and with your customers. Um, and I'll just you know, we'll leave it at that. And I'll say, I can't wait to see you again in person. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thanks for having me. It's so nice to connect with you. And we appreciate, you know, staying connected and being able to share our stories and experiences with you. So stay safe. And we hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks.